American Peasants Radio, Dirt Talk Number 2, Gardening, Getting Started Part 1, written and narrated by Dan Polk. Often I'm asked about how the beginner can get into gardening. Well, really, there are three ways that first come to mind. But before I get into those ways, the first thing I'd say by way of general encouragement is that it's easier than you think. The seeds available from the seed houses and from the retail outlets are all pretty good these days, and they are cheap. If something doesn't sprout, if something isn't doing well, if you had an unlucky wet or cold run of weather at planting time, just buy some more seeds and plant again. Likewise, the plants for most of the nurseries are pretty healthy most of the time, and if you give them what they need, and we'll get into this later, if you find out what they need and give them what they need, they'll produce for you. So you can be confident the plants and seeds are pretty sound these days and should take off and do very well on average. Now, understandably, this audio program is neither a technically detailed nor exhaustive lecture on the subject, but it'll be a good, basic, thorough going over of all the things you need to consider when thinking about gardening for the first time. The soil or potting soil you'll put the plants or seeds into will also be readily available and relatively inexpensive. You may not need to purchase soil or organic material at all, depending on where you live and the method of gardening you choose. Here in the Pacific Northwest, where I live, there's a fair amount of organic matter in the soil and richer soils in the river valleys inland, but here on the coast where I live, there's a lot of clay in the soil. You have a couple of choices there, either enrich the soil you have or bring the topsoil or soil mixture plant in. This leads us into three basic methods of gardening. First and simplest way to get into gardening is to become part of a community garden. And these are springing up all over, all over medium, larger sized towns and cities across the United States and indeed the world. Traditional cultures have had communal gardens for centuries and the West is finally catching on, figuring this out as well. Two of the biggest organizations promoting this ideal and this mindset are the USDA through its People's Garden Initiative and the American Community Garden Association, which has affiliated community gardens all across the United States. Both these organizations have detailed websites and will help you get involved this is the way you want to go. There's probably a community garden within driving, cycling, or walking distance from your home. In a community garden setting, there's typically a nominal fee or no fee in some cases, a raised bed full of soils provided, and this will be soil of varying fertility depending again on who is running the garden, where it's located, how much information is available to the gardeners, including the folks who established the garden, and those who have been using it before you. Water, tools, and amendments are usually available and include in the fee, or gardeners also welcome to bring his or her own supplies and so forth. Typically, there are classes and knowledgeable folks around available to answer questions. These gardens are often connected with the county and state extension service, which is a fantastic source of information, uh, typically, I think, in all 50 states. Uh, that's usually part of whichever college or university has the greatest uh, focus on agriculture in your state. Community garden is what I consider the most self-contained option, having most of all the resources you'd need to get started and learn about gardening firsthand. Typically all you need is supply are seeds or plants. You take this experience a long way or only limited by your climate and your level of interest, your commitment, and your energy. Community gardens are a great way to get started, the hobby of gardening. The second level of commitment would probably be container gardening. This is where you buy containers, fill them with soil, plant your seeds or plants, and experience gardening from that perspective. You really grow a tremendous amount of food in containers. You're only limited by the space and time constraints, really. Simple containers that work well for gardening and growing food include pots that are designed for growing plants. You can use buckets with holes drilled in the bottom for drainage because you have to have drainage. The roots will decay and rot. You can overwater very simply. Large tubs made for storage, and you've got to drill holes in those again. These are like the plastic Rubbermaid tubs. Um, you can even use uh, little kids' plastic swimming pools or any other big enclosure that has drainage and can hold dirt. Uh, probably the biggest, most popular form is still container gardening is the raised bed movement, where big planter boxes, either wooden or plastic, you know, it could be ready-made or you could make them yourself, 
These are also a form of container gardening. I've seen old men growing potatoes and tires stacked one on the other. I've seen railroad ties formed in a sort of corrals and soil dumped in there. And cinder blocks use much the same way to contain soil. Whatever the container might be, you'll need a soil mixture to fill it. Perhaps you have a source of topsoil in mind, but typically soil or soil mixtures will have to be purchased. And depending how big your operation is, the scale of your operation, you might be able to just get by by buying bags of potting soil. There's some fantastic organic mixtures out there with all the microorganisms and organic matter you need right in the mix. All things you need are available in most retail outlets, garden stores, hardware chains, and so forth. Pots or tubs filled with bags of potting soil are a very effective way of getting into gardening. You'll again need seeds or plants or a combination of both, some amendments, some tools, all of which I'll enlarge upon later in this segment. Containers are just a super way for folks with limited space to grow a surprising amount of food simply and effectively. Through the years, I have used and continue to use containers to add growing space to the moderately sized garden I maintain on my city lot. And you can see all this and more at my American Peasants uh, website on YouTube, my channel. And there are many uh, videos on there all about gardening. And there's container gardening on there as well as gardening right in the ground and in raised planter beds. The third and most common way to get into gardening is to dig up a place in your yard or open space, whatever space you're working in, work up the soil to necessary condition and plant your seeds or plants right in the ground. Many places existing soil is rich enough to get started right away and maybe with a few simple amendments or not much in the way of amendments at all. And it's easy to determine if the soil is rich in organic matter to start with. If it's dark and it's easy to crumble, crumble in the hands typically closer in the condition that you want than if it's you know red or really light in color, really hard, hard as rocks and can't break without tools or with a whole lot of force. This type of soil need a lot of organic matter introduced into it, which can be purchased in the form of compost or peat moss or manure in bags. It could be compost created in your yard from soil and leaves and vegetable scraps, manure and so on. Another alternative, you know, for organic matter is to contact stables in your area to see if any horse manure is available to purchase or take away. Typically larger stables have so much horse manure that they're happy to just give it away. The longer it's been sitting, the better it is for the garden. It's broken down, it's not hot anymore. A rich source of nitrogen, there's also in the manure, the broken down forage and feed from the animals that serves good organic matter hummus for the soil, which encourages beneficial organisms to grow and also helps to hold moisture in the soil, but also helps to stay aerated and well drained at the same time. To get started uh, with gardening right in the ground, you might need to remove the top layer of grass or weeds, and you need a sharp shovel and just cut a square edge pattern the size of the garden you want to grow. Lift off the sod or weeds and Lay the pieces sideways and cut or shake the soil back off the roots back into your garden space. Uh, you know, the grassy pieces can be laid aside and you might come in, they might come in handy for uh, landscaping or some other use. And the health and vigor of those should come right back as soon as they get watered again. If you can use those over, that'd be great. Next, you need to examine the soil. The first basic test is a crumble test. Does the soil crumble in the hand? Is it black or dark brown in color? Are there earthworms visible? If so, you may just need to go ahead and add some basic nutrients to the soil, work it to a medium fine consistency and plant your seeds or vegetable starts right in the ground. If it's hard, if it's light colored or red colored and, and clay, it might be impossible or impractical to introduce a garden into that medium until you've uh, incorporated a large uh, amount of organic matter, again, form a compost or peat moss or manure. The ground is hard and difficult to work, you might need a tiller to break it up. With enough organic matter though and hard work, any ground can become a fertile garden. Three variables you're working with are time, energy, and money. You might be money ahead by building or buying some raised wooden or composite garden beds in the soil or soil mix to go with them. You may also find the combination of working directly in the ground, having some raised beds is the best way to go depending again on the variance of the soil and the area where you're going to put your garden and the amount of resource you want to throw at it. Again, your local extension agent is a great source of information on local soils and can in fact provide testing analysis for pH as well as organic matter, beneficial organisms, and so forth. From what 
you know, they find out, they can recommend exactly what you should do to amend your soil. This third method is a traditional method used by home gardeners across the country and across the world. This is the end of part one of the lecture of gardening, getting started. Let's review. Gardening is easier than you think. Seeds and plants are widely available commercially and generally pretty sound should grow for you. Find what they need and give them what they need. The three basic methods to choose from when you jump in. Community gardens, which are pretty much self-contained. Container gardening, where your garden plants are all grown in pots, tubs, and so forth. And traditional in-the-ground gardening, where a plot is spaded up, and you work the soil you have in your yard or your garden spot. Plant your seeds or plants right in the ground. Also, some combination of all three methods just might work for you the best. Thanks for listening and tune into part two next.